All right, this is the meeting of the Grafton uh, Finance Committee for Wednesday, March 15th. This is meeting is a, a hybrid meeting, both in person and Zoom. Present tonight for the Finance Committee, we have Nick, Greg, myself, uh, Angelina, Victoria, Roger, and uh, Sue. I don't see anybody else online from the Finance Committee. I know that Heather won't be here tonight, and Dan will be here at uh, 7 o'clock. Good news is we don't have to do votes by roll call tonight. We can That's do them right. in person, which is nice. That's right. First item on the agenda this evening is the library budget. Beth, uh, the director, Beth Triber, is online. Welcome, Beth. Thanks for being here with us tonight. Thanks for having me. So the way we've the been time, doing... and I appreciate you meeting with me on a weeknight. Thank you. No, that's a absolutely not a problem. So Much appreciated. what I would like to do, what we have been doing with the with the review of the budgets, is we've just had the department head walk us through the budget. I don't know if we sure. want to share the screen so that people can see it. I think we all have the numbers in front of us. So, Beth, if you want to just walk us through the sure. salaries, wages, expenses, I see we have a bit of an increase in permanent personnel. So if you want to start there, that would yeah. probably be great. Sure. So we're looking for a growth of about 6.66%, uh, <clears throat> scary number. Uh, and it is primarily in <clears throat> personnel. Um, we've had lots of activity in our teen room. It is true that if you build it, they will come. And boy, have they been coming to the library. So we're looking to add a, an 18 hour, we really need a 20 hour position, but we're adding uh, the request is an 18 hour position so that I can get an extra body in the teen room from two to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, extra eyes and ears. It would also allow the teen librarian uh, to get off of the desk to possibly do some programming to engage these kids who are coming to the library. Um, they just want to hang out. They just want to socialize and we like to guide them into some uh, worthwhile activities. Um, the other personnel uh, increase is to make my administrative assistant um, full time. She's currently, I believe, 19 hours a week. Um, and I have way more work that I can give to her. And she's very good at what she does. So that's the reward. Uh, we want to give her more work and more hours. That's um, Debbie Jackson. Um, I'm actually angling for her to become uh, the assistant director because, again, there is enough work. There are enough issues to get somebody in in that position. I haven't uh, run through the research to see how many libraries of our size do have an assistant director position. But given the growth of the building and that we have 20 people on staff and I'm doing the work of three people by myself, uh, it doesn't seem unusual. So the request is simply to move Debbie from 19 to 35 hours. And then I would go to the Board of Trustees to see if they would supplement the income that would bump her up several grades um, in our salary and classification system. So the money would come from what, state aid or another revenue source? Yeah, I would ask for it to come from state aid, at least for the first year. So this budget reflects just an additional amount of hours at the current salary in the administrative assistant position. What does that give you for total full-time employees in the library now? I think moving her would bring us to nine. I'd have to pull up my chart to take a look. Yeah, she. Um, for those who don't know, she has a master's in school administration. So while she doesn't have a library degree, she does have a master's. Um, so I think she'd be more than qualified to get the promotion if we could make it work. And Evan, Hang I, on one you, second and let me look at my staffing chart. Thank you, but, um, Evan, I take it we added a position in the health insurance to cover the so that's that benefited? Yes. Okay. Yep. So we have um, uh, set raises bring one one employee 19 to 35 hours is on that wages permanent personnel. Yep. And then we've added one in the 18 hour, which is uh, wages part time personnel. Okay. So we're Basically, a full-time position was added to the library this year when you look at the numbers. Correct. And the health insurance is covered by for that new, because that's yes. now a better, okay. Yeah. So we currently, including myself, we have 10 full-time employees, so she would be number 11 were this to pass as presented. Total of 11. Okay. Uh, any yeah. questions from the Finance Committee on the added personnel? Nothing? Okay. Um, into expenses? Sure. Um, so one thing that happens is anytime we make any change, the entire budget needs to be reconfigured to reflect that we're spending 13% of the total appropriation on educational materials, which is anything a patron can use. Could be an electronic database, could be a map or a globe on the wall, a kit, a book, a newspaper subscription. So adding in positions kind of means automatically the budget is going to go up. So what we do is 
to, to figure that number, delete out the book budget and the periodical budget from the total budget, take a look at the total of everything, and then multiply by a very long decimal point to get to our 13% appropriation. So on paper, it looks like the book budget goes up, and it's because the book budget has to go up by state law. No, oh, I can't quite... Well, it's See, not, it's not state law. It, it, it. it goes up if you want to maintain the state certification so you get the state right. aid that you get. It's not state Thank law. Thank you. Yes. It's, yeah. State what law that? that we have to grow the budget. We not only have to grow the total budget to yep. maintain the state aid, the TAMI, over three years, plus a 2.5% increase, but also that our materials acquisition has to be at least 13% of the budget. And it used to be 15 but by opening two more hours a week, we we're able to knock it back to 13%. So, Mary, if you off the top of your head, do you know what the total amount we get in state aid off the cherry sheet for the library is? I believe that's roughly around 40,000. I can check. It's ballpark, yeah. Yeah. 40,000? Yeah. So, essentially, to get the 40,000, we're increasing the town appropriation by 71,000. If you want to look at it that way, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not just $40,000 in state aid that we receive by meeting the state aid requirement. That's what allows the Grafton residents to have borrowing privileges yes, correct. and all the other Massachusetts yep, libraries no, as well. It understood. also affects our construction grant. If we don't maintain our eligibility in state aid, we would need to pay back any monies that have been distributed by Mass Board of Library Commissioners with interest. So to continue in the grant program that we're in the middle of, that goes you know 20 years from the award, um, we have to maintain the state aid. How many hours is the library open a week? 60, six zero. <clears throat> I my stomach this morning, didn't I? Um, Any other questions on, on that? Any update you want to give us on the um, on the building? How's that? How things going with the building? Things are mostly settled. We still do have a punch list. We are completing um, HVAC commissioning. Still, we're having a programming issue with the new system. Um, we also have a part that's being replaced that's preventing the temperature from being adequate uh, in two spots. My office, conveniently. Of course. Yeah. So I believe that. Um, everyone's putting their heads together again, the hardware and software people and the online people again this week to see if they can figure out what the issue is. It, it, it's got, it's got something to do with there's, there's so many thermostats and so many commands that as it tries to turn on, it's missing some of the commands, I think. Um, so we're still doing HVAC commissioning. Um, we just finished uh, the ADA countertop renovation. Some have gotten put in too high. So the architect and construction company took responsibility for that and got a local mill worker to remediate that work. Um, we did a walkthrough on Friday and I'm just waiting for architect to send a letter to the building inspector so that he can issue us our final permanent certificate of occupancy because oh, that ADA compliance issue with the counters was the, the thing that was preventing the permanent certificate. Um, we also need a sign, which I think wasn't on the list but was something that was in the program um a sign because we we kept the entrance on the common open and access open to the public but it's not accessible because of the stairs if they have a sign out in front by that entrance directing people to go around the corner if they have um, a wheelchair a stroller um, mobility issues where they want to just walk in on a level surface instead of climbing stairs so that's in process um, and then we also are install going to be installing a humidifier for the historical materials room that's next to our 10 seat conference room. They had run into a problem with, uh, I think, length of, of plumbing and piping and the model that they suggested was not going to work. So they've, we've been back to the drawing board a number of times, um, but it's, it's on site. And now we're just going to get some quotes to get that installed. Uh, we're also waiting to install doors to close off the maker space and the presentation area that were part of the original design that turned out what they had envisioned wasn't going to work logistically and had to, again, go back to the drawing board and figure out something that worked. So it feels like we're finally close to the end, a year and a half, I think, yeah. uh, into being open to the public. It's been a long process. Is there, did but, I see, did I see anywhere that there was a CPA grant for the library this year? Or was that last year? That's 60. Uh, um, neither. Neither? I, I think I, I saw something. 
we've, we've, I have we've, requested assistance. Yeah, for, we've for talked about. We uh, let me let me put this. Beth approached them for uh, the cupola. That's what I thought. And it's been deemed as maintenance <clears throat> and not restoration. So oh, okay. we are uh, searching alternative methods consistently. And was there something about chairs? Why is chairs? Oh yes, that was yeah, that was last year. You had okay. the chairs on there, and then you withdrew them. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I that's yeah, fine. That's I just I was yeah something was in my head. And I was good, wondering. Good memory. Beth, have you taken care of the, has the leak been taken care of at the library? We think so. So I, I've, I've been on vacation, so I haven't been in since yesterday's storm to see if we had leaking from the rain and the wind and the snow uh, in the community room. I did not get any email or contact from staff saying that. Well, we that's did. good news. Um, yeah, I, w I would hope that uh, even if I'm on vacation, they'll be texting or calling about that. Um, we think that it had to do with the green roof planters acting like a sponge and dumping water over the flashing that was a little bit lower than the planters and then trickling down through the building. So we've cut back the edge of the green roof, the sedum, so that that won't continue to happen. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Budget looks good. No issues. I'm glad we're able to, you know, get the man, the, the uh, employee power in there that you need to, to maintain and run the library. Maintain our Thank state you. aid, maintain our state grant, because obviously if you don't keep that, we don't get the reimbursement for the debt service, and then that's a whole another problem right. for us, so that's good to hear. So I, I have no issues with the library budget. Are there any questions from any members of the Finance Committee? So what, when uh, the, this, the, the state aid, does that go, that managed by the library trustees? Absolutely. So it goes into a town bank account and the town gets to keep the interest that's generated. It has to be in an interest bearing account. And then I bring requests for funding to the board of trustees and they approve it out of that state aid account. Okay. Do we know what the, the balance right now is on that account approximately? Um, yeah. Off the top of my head, I don't. I would say it's between 80 and $100,000. Um, and we've just uh, appropriated $28,000 for temp staffing because I have a number of people who've gone out unexpectedly on medical leave uh, and I need to pull in temps quickly um, and the current budget doesn't have any wiggle room. So the trustees are going to pay for that cost. So, and do you have, but we're spending it. We're not just holding on to it anymore. And do you have an estimate of how much of the operating budget for FY24 uh, you're planning to use that? As I know we had talked about some of the some of the items coming from state aid this year? Yeah, um, I don't. I would have to go through and, and can total those figures separately and send them to you. But uh, yeah, I, I had earmarked, like we, we usually, in the past, we've paid for things like travel to conferences, dues, marketing, all relatively low figures, you know, $1,000 here, $2,000 there. Um, I recommended paying for those out of state aid. And last year we cut our programming budget uh, to zero with no town contribution um, because we had a grant to help pay for programming. So we're, we're sort of slowly building back in um, things that should be coming from the municipal, bu municipal budget into the municipal budget. And so what do you, I'm sorry, go ahead, Victoria. I, I was just gonna ask, and, and how much uh, money did you spend last year out of that grant program for programs? Is, is 8,000 going to cover year over year your, your programming budget? Um, I think so. We're, we're just being creative and cutting to the bone. I mean, yeah. Do you have? We we still we do have additional money in our gift account still. Okay. So we'll we'll be able to cover what we need. Do you guys have a, a schedule 8, set up or kind of a, a a run for what that programming looks like? Ahead of time. I can tell you we usually spend between twenty five hundred and you know about twenty five hundred per quarter. We put a lot of time and energy into our summer reading program, yeah. um, which is nearly three months out of the year. Um, Right now in March, we're actually we're on a programming hiatus, and uh, we're, so we're starting to think about May, which like is our community read with the friends, um, book groups um, are are kind of a and story time. Those are the things we always do, and a make love for the teenagers. But in terms of like who are we going to have in for you know like like paid programming for FY twenty four? No, that's not quite on our radar yet because it's it's just so far away. But we do a lot of different things. We you know we have author visits. Uh, we do a lot of free things now that we have the community space where we're partnering with other organizations in town, like having a winter's farmer's market or a presentation um, from a local teenager working through conservation committee, concert, sorry, yeah, yeah, conservation department. So it's a mix. Nice. Yeah. So back to follow up on Greg's question before. So 
on average per year, how much are you spending in state aid to supplement your budget? It dep- honestly, I can't. It, it's not consistent every year, so we're not okay. spending every penny that we get every year. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we've yeah we've traditionally banked it to take care of capital projects so that we didn't have to bring those to the town. Um, and now the last two or three years, it's been supplementing our budget. So um, well, it's, it's it's a good it's yeah, a good resource. Kind of it's a good resource to have for those situations when they come up to maintain things. I see, Danny, you have your hand up. Was there a question or a point you wanted to make? Yeah, there was just a quick point. Hi, my name is Dana Wilson, library trustee. Um, I just wanted to say that it was just a very cute, a very uh, um, brief point about the Kufla. It did. I know that Beth did take a request and talk to the Community Preservation Committee about that. And um, my understanding, I had some discussion with them about it, and they said they really haven't ruled it out. They haven't said no but they require and they need an estimate. And I know Beth was really just in the beginnings of that work. So I just wanted just to make sure that. So you may go back to the Community Preservation Committee once you get the call. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right, yeah, we, we have a crane coming on the 27th of March and we are hoping actually that it is considered restoration and preservation because it seems to be some you know, a- aging of the cupola with the, with the wood rotting and falling off. So to that end, um, I've actually just drafted a like 50 page grant application to Mass Historic Commission because if, if the architects who are coming to look at it in two weeks do deem it not repair or maintenance, but preservation uh, or restoration, then we're eligible for some matching funding from the state. And then the CPC, so, the CPC money, the CPA money could be the town match for the state grant. You work at that well, I, I would even go so not to speak for anybody else, but I, I would actually my proposal would be that we should pull from multiple pots of money on this. The okay. capital campaign might be able to kick in some and so could Board of Library Trustees. But both of those groups would need to like CPC, see the estimate, see the proposal, probably review the grant and then vote independently. But my hope would be we would all put in a little bit of money. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah I, nice. I would hope the original estimate I got from 2020 with a roofer just glancing at it said eighty thousand dollars that was a few years ago 80, 80. so 80, that's a lot of money but divvy it up four ways that, i think it might be manageable if you get yeah if a bunch of pot, different that pots of money 20, so it's probably over a hundred thousand yeah, yeah. 000, yeah. Over yeah and it was it was like i think 140 000 20 20 plus years ago when they actually took the cupola off is my understanding repaired it somewhere else and brought it back and reinstalled it so this is dana again i I would only add to what Beth said, um, that grant that she's talking about, the Mass Historic Preservation um, a Programs Grant, that we don't have to match that. That is just a grant that is given to um, to to towns to fix, um, to restore buildings. Like, like the townhouse had a grant. That's how they got the roof done to start with. And also um, the library did get a grant from that same organization many years ago to, to do some of the repair work that um, Beth has described that was done many years ago. Excellent. That's a good summary. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other questions from the Finance Committee? Greg? Um, do, do you have a uh, job description for the proposed li- uh, assistant library director at this point? Um, I, I do, yeah. So I, I talked briefly with Evan and I think with William um, and I forwarded it for their review probably a couple months ago, but I haven't done any nudging because like preparing the budget was the most important thing. Nudged. So, yeah. And I also had asked um, Debbie, my administrative assistant to send me a note to tell me about all the times that she has worked outside of her administrative assistant description um, to make decisions or because she had information or she was available to meet with contractors when I wasn't there. Um, and you know, she has every right to say, sorry, that's not my job description, but that's not her personality. She gets things done. Uh, so I told her I need an email from her that would support, you know, here are the things that I'm doing already in the capacity of this larger position. Okay. And the, um, you said the, the educational administration degree is compatible with the requirements for a library director. I, I think that plus she'll she'll be at you know uh, year, she's I think she's at a year of experience so far. So for a director, you'd be looking for three to five years. It seems reasonable. But for an assistant director, you'd be looking for one to three years of library experience. So she'll have a certification. 
She could take a, something that's called a basic library technique certification, which would actually enable her to go be a library director somewhere. But I, I think with the uh, master's in school administration plus library experience in multiple departments, that that would be comparable experience for the requirement. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Greg? Beth, thank you. Trustees, thank you very much for being here tonight. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for all of your time that you're putting into this and for all the meetings that you now have to have. I'm all done. So thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you very much, Beth. Have a good evening. Have Take a good care. Thank you. Dr. Mike, you're you ready welcome. to go? Yes, sir. How are you tonight, sir? Super. Thank you for asking. I'm joined by <clears throat> the local school committee rep, Anthony Yitz, uh, who served uh, on our committee for a number of years now as a liaison to Grafton. Uh, Pardon? Since 2021. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that qualifies as many. So uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say thank you to the librarian. She sent me a nice message. I, I joined the ribbon cutting ceremony for the opening of your beautiful facility. And included in the thank you was the uh, acknowledgement of the support of our students for various capacities. Also, I'd like to convey a special thank you to Susan Fiacco, the other half of the Susan teams. Uh, she was a pleasure to work with for so many presentations previously, and I appreciate her help in coordinating communications in, uh, in the entire presentation. It's good to see people in person, right? Uh, and I think last year we did it on Zoom with you. Yes, we I remember have. correctly. That's correct. We did that in Zoom. Um, and for those who might keep track of this, um, this is my 31st presentation, I believe, for the graphic wow. FinCon. Okay, it's been a distinct pleasure to work with the town uh, and work with the other 12 communities that are part of the membership. Uh, you, I hope you were in receipt of the electronic version. Yes. Okay, we have it, but I have two documents to share with you. Okay, first is a print copy of that which was shared, and I'll share it because it's printed by our students, and so we kind of take pride in their way to contribute. Uh, in, yeah. It's a, in our case, um, the, what used to be graphic arts, but it's now multimedia. This is another learning activity for students. So I appreciate that. I'll just pass them down. Right. So Amber has it up on the screen if you want to walk us through. Yes. Okay. Well, let's, I'll wait till you just have that copy. Sure. The home audience will hold on for a moment. Oh, yes, sir. If I can target you to the um, handout, this is an executive summary, and we'll walk the public through the full document as well as your committee. All right. And the executive summary is intended to give the key factors that are driving the request that your vocational technical school is making uh, of, of, of the town. Uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge the fact that a former member of your committee, uh, Laura. Margana was is in, in the audience here as our business manager and um, she regularly receives an invitation to come to the podium but she's a shy person who just gets the job done <laughs> so, in any case um, as you would have noticed as you downloaded information from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts it came a little later than normal but it did come it's de it delayed the process for us as it delayed most we don't take issue with that. We just ask everyone to recognize that uh, it took um, the full 90 days, if you will, that the governor uh, had the option as a new governor to take advantage of that, uh, analyzing the state budget a little longer, and then provided the information to us. So in that release by the state, okay, the absolute minimum contribution, uh, which is based upon the 2022 property tax of Grafton and the 2020 income tax as reported to the Department of Revenue uh, to uh, to the state. The state calculated an increase of the absolute minimum obligation 
as a significant component of the assessment that we're, is now before you of $194,603. So it is, it is, that's a 19% increase in the state's calculation. Another factor that contributed to that is the Grafton had a um, significant increase in the students, which was uh, uh, Mr. Yitz and I uh, attended uh, a Board of Selectmen's meeting over and above the presentations to the Finance Committee that particular year, where we were challenged to uh, give every consideration to increasing the enrollment of Grafton. And so, in some ways, uh, this is part of that response. So you're basically saying we asked for this increase? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, that, yeah. it, it, that's one way to word it. <laughs> Admissions are blind, so. so yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, it's not uncommon that the towns, are, for each town, it, it, you know, is very eager to increase its student enrollment. And the interest of coming to the Book Deck School uh, is, is robust to say the least. It's one of the strongest in the state. So in any case, I just asked people to take into consideration that as soon as the state shared its first piece of information with you and with us, and certainly with the town administrator, uh, then uh, this created that component of the request. Uh, the total number of new dollars we seek is 263,024. So again, that targets and that information uh, has been sent. Um, the total assessment is listed there. The debt uh, is uh, was pre-known. You handled debt a little differently, but that's certainly your option, uh, and uh, that amounts. How many so, years left on the debt service? One. This is the last payment yes. of debt. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I, as a professional courtesy, whenever there's a significant change in enrollment, I, I send a communication to the town administrator of that community, and I certainly did that with Evan. Mm -hmm. Okay, to alert him that there was a 13% increase, and therefore that will contribute, you know, give you a heads up uh, for, for planning purposes. What's the total student population? 1,244. And just to give you an idea, since I've been on the board, in 2012, Grafton was at its highest enrollment of 115 total students. But then with the opening of the new high school and the interest to stay in town, uh, the enrollment in 2020 dropped down to 56. Since 2020 to our projected 2024, we've gone up 73%, back up to 97 students. We went from 56 to 97 in the last four years. So it's kind of getting us back to where we were in the early to mid 2000s, but it, it does mean you know sub substantial increase in the cost because we're almost doubled the amount of students sure. in, in four years. But according to state reports, there are also fewer students in the Grafton system, as which is pretty common across the state that there are fewer students enrolled. Okay, uh, just looking again, if I will, on the um, fact sheet or the focal sheet, the per student assessment is fifteen thousand five hundred fifty-six dollars, and that listed. That amount is complemented by any state aid and any grants, and you're going to see that we're particularly aggressive in complementing your investment. Would the governor set aside for you for an increase in state aid this year? Uh, it's $448 per student more, and I'll walk you through that when we get into the green oh, okay. sheet of the right. book. No. Sorry, I jumped ahead. No, you're on target. There are 119 school systems in the state of Massachusetts that only receive $30 per student, much to the disappointment of the 119. Yep. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're more, they were more generous with us, if you will, on the basis of uh, uh, economically disadvantaged situations and the fact that the Volk Tech School has to meet a higher standard. So instead of getting $30 a student in the governor's plan, we'll receive $448 a student, which obviously is helpful. And I'll walk you through the specific dollar amounts in a moment. Uh, I'd like to point out that while we certainly don't wish any system to, ha to run into difficulty, uh, with the school committee that Mr. Yitz serves on and other 12 members and with the relationships we have with the Teachers Association, once again, we had no grievances and no legal entanglements, entangle which means that we don't have to redirect money for legal expenses. We don't have to take it away from kids or build that as a budget. All right. There is a substantial increase in state aid. I'll walk you through that. Also, once again, the district will draw upon its excess and deficiency or reserve fund, kind of a free cash for a community such as you, Okay, of, of a 100,000 to reduce assessments. All right. Yes, Susan, question? Dr. Mark, would you please explain to the new finance committee members what that means? Sure. So they have an understanding of, of course. why it happens. Yeah. 
A, a regional system, according to the rules and laws of Massachusetts, is entitled to have a 5% reserve of its operating budget. For us, that would be uh, basically 1.2 million. All right. Uh, a reserve needs to be certified by the Department of Revenue uh, after your audit is done. An independent audit is done for regional school every year. So that's another requirement. Uh, you have to budget for that. All right. So the Department of Revenue has certified our excess and deficiency account in the amount of, I think it's $805,000, okay? Uh, and so the $800,000 uh, is $500,000 under the maximum we have, uh, and it's regularly something we attempt to do rather than wipe it out. Uh, it helps with us with emergencies. It also helps for us for improvements of our building, uh, and we usually make a commitment to do what we can to replenish it. Okay, so that's kind of the range that, that we've had. Uh, and this is anal the analogy I would use is a community would have uh, free cash that, to draw upon, and, you know, uh, and obviously it's encouraged to save money where it can. Uh, but this is, this is our reserve bank. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, you guys get that. <laughs> by the way, money from that account is only spent uh, in public uh, voted session by the school committee. It's, it's not... Um, so it's presented as part of the budget presentation I'll make in just a few moments. We'll give you a reference to some how we plan to use that this, in the next cycle. But it's voted, uh, it's posted in our uh, at school committee agendas uh, as uh, as votes, and then it's voted publicly. So it's very transparent. Uh, we continue to make a number of improvements uh, relative to our own building, which is now more than 60 years old. Uh, and because we have plumbers and electricians and HVAC technicians and others, we're in a position to make improvements that a non-vocational school wouldn't. So we, you know, we, we take pride in it, excuse me, but we, uh, we also are pleased. We are aware, although there are a number of vocational technical schools in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, it's oftentimes um, there's a reaction that the staff are, are hired to teach, not to fix things, okay? Mm -hmm. And therefore, are they... They're less inclined to, to, to go be outside the teaching role. Uh, again, because of the relationships that have been established in our system, we're very pleased to say, no, they don't do that. So, um, Evan, I should have acknowledged you earlier. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> months and people, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh -oh. We stick together. <laughs> well, um, the, um, and, and the next bullet here is that we've also recently established a new partnership with National Grid. We asked to participate in a, an experiment where they were trying new technology because uh, we, we, in the budgetary building process of this year, uh, we, uh, we noticed that obviously electric rates were going, I wouldn't say through the roof because that sounds like a solar pun, but I'm just saying we're, uh, we're, we're going up. And so we wanted to devise additional strategies to do that. We are a green school. Uh, but but we're glad to see that they're willing to partner with us in, with this particular project. Nice. All right. If we look at the sheet, I'll just quickly reference it. Uh, you're going to see a healthy list of grants in the amount of 2.4 million. When I, you know, stop giving you the overview and walk you into the spe more specifics. But here are some of the activities uh, that are more recent. Uh, since the publication was was uh, printed. Uh, we, we've continued to chase and be aggressive in securing additional grants in multiple forms. And there's even new ones since this, okay? But, um, but, but here is a delineation or a, a snapshot of some of the op mostly competitive grants that um, are under review now. Uh, and we think we have, got a, we have an excellent shot of getting those, okay? Uh, so we've received favorable uh, feedback or encouragement on what's been submitted, and we also have a track record. Okay. Um, also, and there's, an, there's a category called other. Uh, some years ago, the state of Massachusetts, in a changeover at the treasurer, state treasurer level, um, dusted off some pen, OPEB billing, okay, uh, type expenses. Uh, I said, it's, let's say support staff pension money uh, for bills back in th for 2013. They're not fiscal year, they use calendar years in 2014. And rather than quickly pay those, we objected to the delay. I would say that we were not given any notification that the state had that obligation, that it hadn't, had not been addressed in other forms. Uh, we have a consistent track record of paying bills when we receive them. We don't pay a bill when we don't receive one. And uh, we argued that 
not necessarily a statute of limitations, but it was unfair, unreasonable to expect this to be paid in a subsequent fiscal year when the state was negligent in providing any timely bill to us. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, this continues to be uh, uh, something that's not resolved, okay, um, but it also hasn't been a push to be paid. And so the auditors, when they come in for our budget, saying that, well, you can't ignore it, it is technically a lien until you can get it resolved. Okay, okay we certainly hope you're successful, uh, and uh, but we, we recommend that you not, not ignore it. So we have this money uh, stored, okay, to cover the cost. It won't be a surprise to you or to us, uh, but if we can be forgiven, we can redirect that money, and that's what we're trying to do. So we've filed, we have a, a bill before the uh, Senate. Uh, uh, this was, we attempted this previously. Uh, last year we tried it and it got stuck in the House Ways and Means. We got it through the Senate, but we didn't get it through the House. COVID may have contributed to that. Yeah. We'll see. And the last item in the uh, abbreviated version is the fact that, once again, the state of Massachusetts has renewed the partnership we have with Milford Hospital for, uh, you know, uh, in the amount of, you know, 100 and something thousand per year for 10 years. So there's a million dollars there as well. Nice. Well, so this summer. The uh, document that was provided to you electronically uh, is the one we'll walk through now and raise, respond to any questions along the way. <clears throat> if you turn the pages, uh, the budget subcommittee is, is listed. The budget subcommittee is a cross-reference of school committee, administrative personnel, and uh, business managers, and, and, the, and, the, and the treasurer who works for the district. Uh, so. Uh, they, they gathered for at least 10 to 12 different publicly posted sessions uh, and listened to presentations by curriculum people, uh, facility people, and others relative to defending the budget request uh, and then deciding what, what, what would survive in the same manner that you, you do, I met. The next communication is the standard uh, overview letter that I generate. And in the letter, I try to highlight some of the principal, uh, you know, or significant factors. One is that your vocational technical school has one of the longest teaching school years in the state of Massachusetts. It asks the teachers to work 195 days. Traditional school year is 180, 181, 182. Of the 195 days, 193 are student contact days, are eligible to be used as student contact days. So you, you have 13 additional, rather than 180, you have 193. You have 13 additional teaching days uh, that are in the budget. Right. One of the other advantages we've discovered, like yesterday, that we can switch to a remote day and not lose it as a snow day. The state of Massachusetts won't allow school systems with the minimum of the 180 to do remote. They have to be in person, so they've got to make up the time. In our case, we can do that without losing the day and maintaining the instruction, and there's plenty of instruction to be advanced, even in a vocational technical school, in remote learning. So our staff has been practicing, students have lessons already, uh, and it minimizes the disruption of, of the snow days. Uh, this was something that was bargained between the teachers and the, uh, the uh, and the school committee a number of years ago, and it's been a landmark situation. But it's not easily bargained, to say mm. the least. It uh, also helps the seniors as well, because we're not making up days at the end of the semester while the seniors have already graduated. Mm. So we can make up those days remotely in real time Without having the seniors miss days. Nice. Was it a smooth transition doing remote yeah, uh, at the school for the teachers? Uh, we actually ran the, before COVID uh, really took off, uh, we ran the teachers through an aggressive uh, kind of Zooming and other okay. training program. <coughs> yeah. So we, we partnered with Bayport uh, College up mm -hmm. in East Long Meadow, uh, Long Meadow uh, and uh, they had received federal grant money for uh, Zoom type yep. uh, education. And so we partnered with them and then trained people and then they we had trained a trainer kind of yeah. process. So yeah, right. yeah, thank you. That answer that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the letter also talks about some of the significant developments. Uh, it's not uncommon to be asked the question, how much is your health benefits up? We're pleased to see that they're up 2%, okay? Uh, it's a 75, 25% contributory rate. That varies from town to town. At least one of our communities does it 90, 10. Okay, um, it was it was a 90 10 uh, contributory rate when I first started. The school committee has negotiated a, to a 75 25 uh, type process of a shared responsibility. But what's really nice is when the total premium goes up 2%. Okay, uh, that and that's that's um, 
that's attributable to uh, all the wellness techniques that have been built in, all right? Uh, and we've been fortunate. Okay, we have uh, we have a veteran teaching staff. Um, the state has monitors how often uh, staff change or turn over things, and we receive some of the highest ratings of this area relative to the fact that, like the superintendent, nobody leaves. So, okay. <laughs> um, so there are things. One of the other things I highlighted here was that I felt it appropriate. The school committee has been um, encouraging a recognition that no matter what improvements we make and the way we best protect your facility, and anyone who wants the tour, just let me know. I'll be glad to, to, to provide that tour of the facility. Um, the, um, but the age of the building can't, cannot be hidden in total, all right? It's more than 60 years old, and things uh, which still makes it younger than the superintendent. But, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, uh, but things wear out, okay? And so uh, I'm giving like a one-year notice of the likelihood of advancing a bond to make significant improvements next year. And it also is timely because, as you asked, Mark, when does the current debt end? It would, it would, you know, the current debt is a thirty was based on thirty six million dollars, a seventy five point five percent reimbursable under Mass School Building Authority, but but the borrowing rate was like two percent. <laughs> the next one would probably be seven percent. Okay, we'll see. So it would be a different situation. The you, last you would seek MSBA reimbursement You'd for anything it. in the bond that's eligible. Okay, okay. I, my guess is there'll be some things that will. Yep. Uh, that's the standard rule, as you yep. probably are aware, mm -hmm. but others may not be. Okay. Um, the so last. What's point, the ballpark in your head right now? Total cost of renovation. Eighteen million is my number. Okay. Eighteen to twenty. Let me say. Okay. All right. So it's it's half <coughs> of thirty-six million. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's a ballpark. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the uh, the last bond was a twenty-year bond. Uh, it's this would probably not be twenty years. Okay. Might be a shorter duration, depending on on the items okay but it's a you know it's fairness it allows the, your capital planning groups and others to be made aware uh, with a one-year notice even of the likelihood that we would present something which still would be subject to the voters majority of the communities uh, yeah more than the majority for day. any two-thirds for, for that uh, well no more than that oh really <laughs> yeah well let me say it depends if it if it takes the form of a ballot it would be a majority okay you're so I would, shouldn't be too quick to say no to that uh, the operational budget is two-thirds. Yep. Debt has different restrictions to it. If you do town by town, uh, or if, you, if a, a district-wide ballot would be a simple majority. Okay. That might be the way we go. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so how okay. soon are you looking for bonding to take out a bond? What's what year? 25 you're looking for no, year? bonding? No, no, no. What year? What year are you looking 2025, it sounds like. That's correct. Okay. That's okay. That would be the yeah, yeah to okay. kick it off. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Um, so that's a summary of the items that are in, uh, referenced in the cover letter. Okay. The next page um, is the budget building process. Uh, we, we like to indicate and share the fact that the budget building uh, process um, check something there, uh, is, is a multifaceted, uh, just like the same thoroughness that you go through. Uh, and and uh, all the difference. We have some other f features or reviews that are in the process. <laughs> One of the things that's different, we have 13 town managers, okay? We like most of them. No, no, just, uh, the, uh, we have 60 select persons, we have 126 finance committee members, okay? We this like is your most, favorite finance We like most right? of them. <laughs> so, whatever. Uh, the, uh, but we are your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mom. <laughs> uh, so the review in itself on the street is a little more elaborate, and it certainly distinguishes it from a town department. Sure. Et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's okay. Accountability is, is, is within the rules. Yep. Okay. Um, we also have some 400 vocational tradespeople clustered by the programs are, that are, are part of our advisory committees. And so the a dental assisting <coughs> program has the area dentist in it. So, so there'll be 15 or 16 or 18 dentists that come in, look at the program, make recommendations for curriculum, look at the budget request of that, of that department. And so we have those additional reviews, and oftentimes we'll make recommendations about, oh, I know we can get that, or, you know, for, for donations and things like that. They, they oftentimes are looking to recruit our kids uh, for jobs and for future work. Uh, and... Um, at the current 
percentage, 60% of the senior class uh, is on cooperative education, or will be on cooperative, which means every other week they're going to report to a job. Okay, and uh, in, in this, you know, obviously there's a labor shortage across the nation, if not the world, uh, but um, we um, we have excellent relationships with the, with the business community that have been established, uh, partially because if they're willing to volunteer and contribute, like your like library trustees, uh, to look at our programs. So they would be early on in the budgetary building process. Okay, and we typically and, refresh one or two of our shops every summer when school leaves. So if, if you if you do find the time to take a tour, um, I advise you go through the shops. It's not old used equipment. Our students are learning the latest technology, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it's in automotive, et cetera. And uh, we pay a lot of attention to keeping those shops at, 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 the, at the highest level. I work in manufacturing, and I could say there's there's nothing in the school that I would um, I would I would not advise to be used in industry. So. So without belaboring point, you can see some of the multiple steps here. The public hearing is uh, already posted legally. Uh, it will take place on the 23rd of this of this month. Okay, uh, so so technically we have not agreed on this budget in full. full well, I was going to. My question was going to be, what's the likelihood of that number changing through the public hearing process? Not <coughs> not not likely. <coughs> the other thing I would point out, though, is that. We have a track record, at least for the past 30 years that I've been part of it, to come out with a budget number and live with it. No matter what changed, we don't come back. Okay? There was one year where the state re reduced the promised or anticipated Chapter 70 base aid by $1.8 million. Okay? Uh, obviously, it was the state in a different financial situation. I think it was 2008. But in any case, uh, they, they reduced that because you had to live with reductions that the state passed on to you, we viewed it even, and we served 13 towns. In some cases, we view ourselves as like the 14th town, okay, and play by the same rules. And so we, we have never come back. That must have been 2008. 80? 2008? I think so. Yeah. I think that's what he said. Yeah. Did he say that? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. That's why I agreed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we may. All right, come on. The green sheet is oftentimes looked at as a revenue sheet. That this is where you, to get to your question, you'll see the basic chapter 78 is a total increase of six hundred and twenty nine thousand three hundred and sixty six dollars, which is the far right hand side. I see that on the screen as well. OK, uh, and we actually view that as good news. Last year, I would view that as phenomenal news, considering that Grafton got a hundred thousand dollar increase in chapter seven. You're one of the one nineteen. I know. Yes. Yep. I, I would not be surprised, I certainly hope you're successful, to see the legislature enhance that a little bit. We're working okay. on it. Yeah. No, I would I mean it's fair and reasonable to come to conclude that thirty dollars a kid uh, it certainly will become sixty or, or maybe even a hundred or something per student. That's not really a lot of money, but it's certainly better than thirty dollars. Okay. So well, especially when they tell you the minimum contribution has to go up significantly per student, and they're only giving you thirty dollars of that increase. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's where the burden of responsibility is being placed. Let's say. Okay. Yeah. I well, I'm glad you got that kind of money. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you. No, it it, it helps us to do things. Okay. Um, also, because we're a regional school, we're entitled to regional transportation. All right, and we take full advantage of that. Uh, Lorna and I, we follow these things very closely. Anytime with the state numbers and things. Uh, this, the media has reported that the regional transportation, which is known as Chapter 71, because uh, it's a reimbursable, so it delay, it's delayed a little bit, is expected to be at 90%. We're not seeing that yet. We're, we're seeing a 75%. It's been about 75 for the last several years, right? Yeah, well, there was one year of a bump, okay? And so that's the year they like to reference. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, good observation. But um, so um, we, we're only using the number they gave us, yep. so we don't want to... Uh, we don't, I don't know what to say, uh, play possum or, or play games with this. Uh, we, we legitimately and accurately project what the numbers will be, and that's what we put in here. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so um, that's what's here. All right. Um, so and then you, there's the, the unreserved fund balance. It shows a negative because a year ago we, we drew 225000 from our reserve. Okay. Uh, and we had a little more money. And this year we thought it best to not to draw as much, okay. So we did we drew a lesser amount, but still drew some, 
okay, the 100,000, so that's why that shows up as a reduction when you look at versus the previous year, all right? Um, and then um, it, it, consistent with our comment, Mark, about the Chapter 71, um, there was a bump increase last time that of greater than 90 percent, and so we're not, we're, we can't anticipate that's going to happen when they're showing us 75 percent. So um, the the total budget increase is 5.9. It was greatly debated. Okay, I have to say that, uh, but it's really uh, it, it's more significant to look at the way the state calculates Grafton's obligation. It's 13 different contributory rates. Okay, it, it, that changed in 1993 when this, the court case dictated that the communities, the 351 cities and towns of the Commonwealth had to pay according to their ability to pay. And questionable, but the state makes a determination based on the two factors I mentioned. That would be property value, valuations and income levels, not really current, uh, previous, because they know exactly what they are, to determine each community's ability to pay, and then they arrive at certain things. Before 1993, if you had 10% of the students at PVT, uh, you had 10% of the bill. All equals. That changed when the state said, no, no, we're not going to do it anyway. It was actually easy to sell a budget then, okay? But no, no, it's different. So um, whether it's library money or anything else, this is the state rules. We live with them. The state passed a new law called the Educational Opportunity Act, okay? Uh, and uh, it, it's in its um, third year, technically, of, a, of the six-year plan. It was supposed to be seven, but they missed the first year, so it became a six-year plan. Uh, and that's driving significant money, but to urban communities, mm. not to not to the Graftons and not to the, the Valley and not to the communities we serve, with the exception of Milford. Okay, Milford, with its minority population, uh, unlike Grafton, will receive $7.4 million in Chapter 70. Okay, and be from them yep. kind of thing. So of the 6% or the 5.9% increase in expenses, obviously instruction takes up a big part of that union-wise. What are you uh, in terms of union increases and year? what year of the contract are you? Yeah, we're negotiating with the teachers right now. Okay. Uh, and so we're currently on the third year of a three-year contract. It's good till June. Yep. Uh, at this juncture, we normally have conversations and negotiations. Uh, the, the first... One session has been held with the two parties, with the school committee. Mr. Yitz serves on that committee, uh, with the teachers. Uh, there was no legal representation uh, by either side uh, in, for the exchange that took place. The last, con so there's no new number yet. Okay. It's on the, you know, the last contract, uh, we created, a, I guess, another indication of the, the relationship we enjoyed. We, the school committee negotiated in the first year of the current contract. This is the third. Uh, that the teachers would be given a 2% raise, but if the state didn't give us the promised Chapter 70 amount, it would go from 2 to 1.5. That's exactly what happened. And so the raise was adjusted automatically on the table <coughs> in case that happened, and it did happen. So the first year of the new three-year contract, of which we're in now, was a 1.5. I believe the second year was 2, and I think the third year was 2.4. So that's the current year. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So you're locking money away somewhere for negotiations in your new budget for next year. You, you, I'm yes. not going to ask what that number no, is. No, that's obviously. okay. That's fine. Yes, that's correct. Okay. We we're not coming back to you for any change in that. That we'll, was my question. Yeah, we'll have to make the necessary adjustments. I'm amazed adjustment. that the teachers agreed to that and went down to one and a half. That's remarkable. Yeah, thank it's you. a lot about your staff. It, it does. There's, Nobody there's, ever leaves, so we already had that conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Well, you take the world of them, okay? Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know, say that I guess you treat people right, to treat them fairly, and right. show them with respect, Absolutely. And, and good things happen. Yep. So uh, I think we're blessed. I mean, I, I, uh, when with the MCAS scores, which are the highest in the area, all these incredible awards, these scholarships, and so many things, I said, you know, to the parents, they don't do it for the super, because of the superintendent or the school committee. They do it because of the quality of the teachers and the support staff, to mm -hmm. all, everybody contributing. Right. So we're very fortunate. But thank you for noticing that. Mm -hmm. um, major increases uh, would be found in uh, security and technology, uh, Mark, as far as uh, other than what you've already noticed. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> if you look on the back side of the green sheet, this is where we're getting into what Susan asked me to, to elaborate on, the excess and deficiency. 
we want to make certain, and the auditors have recommended, we uh, we be very transparent in from the get-go, relative to kind of permission to spend. All right, this is this is only drawing uh, or utilizing if we need the money that the Department of Revenue has already certified is our reserve. Okay, uh, but technically you're not supposed to be spending without permission, kind of thing. So so this is put out there, uh, and then even when and if it's spent, uh, which which uh, it's done through school committee votes. Okay, at school committee meetings, right? So, and the, the amount listed here is 600, up to 650 of the 805, I think it is, I mentioned, uh, could be used for that purpose, right? Keep in mind, 100,000 was used to reduce the budget, okay? And so it's, it, uh, we're under the obligation, if you will, to find ways to replenish it, and, and we will do our best to do that. And you've done that several times using this account for reducing your budget in the past. Yes. Yes. Last year? Was it? Last year? The last time we did it, right? Yes. Yes. I remember yeah. a number of years you did that. It yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> yeah. We For roughly 15 years, we've drawn upon it to reduce the assessments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, probably a high water mark of 300,000, sometimes mm -hmm. less. This time, 100,000. I think you keep, what, around 800,000 in your E&D account? Uh, yeah, it, no, yes, yeah. that's a reasonable number, okay? But it's a good half a million under the, the max. Yeah, because yeah. you'd have to give money back to the communities if you're over that max. Yeah, no, you yeah, true. Okay, so moving on, the next one is the actual um, kind of the assessments, yep. right? And and here are the numbers that have been given to you. Grafton, as Mr. Yitz mentioned, has 97 students in the October 1 count. That's a known number. It's a fixed uh, whether more kids come in or if you, you know, which is usually the case, more come in than leave, okay, that, that's, uh, that drives the uh, 7 point, I'll call it 7.8 percent ownership, which is a 0 0.07797. All right, that's your current uh, ownership of the district. Uh, the minimum contribution is, is whatever presented to us, presented to you from the state, and then um, some of the uh, uh, additional assessment factors uh, are listed in the total, total bill. This has been shared uh, with sure. communications sent uh, as a professional courtesy to the town administrator, alerting him of what to expect from us. Um, okay. I don't think you're going to find any numbers different than what's already been shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Moving on, if I may, the next blue sheet is the uh, the debt. Uh, this is nearing the end of the debt, as mentioned, uh, and you have a fixed number which is all part of the 20-year payment schedule of the debt. So based on what you said, we'll probably get a break in fiscal 25, and then if you go forward with the project, we might start seeing a debt back in FY25? That's 26, FY26, rather. 20, yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes. That would, again, if approved. If approved. Understood. Yeah. I hope you'll support it. So it's in your best interest. Okay. <laughs> I think. Um, a motion to approve the uh, debt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's that's pre-known situation. Uh, we generally put a return on investment. Some of the things that, uh, like what you get for the money, kind of how do I give it or a prospectus, and so we generally share information. Uh, we're quite proud of what's happened uh, relative to the completion. Uh, the dropout rate is zero. The completion rate is a hundred percent or ninety-nine plus. The MCAS scores are the highest in the area. I mean it, and these are. These are things that are measured outside of us. So it's not us patting ourselves on the back, uh, and it's not intended to embarrass anybody else, okay, kind of thing. Uh, it's 99%, well, 99.7% graduation rate is pretty good. Yeah, yes, yeah. I don't, I don't recall last year, but the three years prior, we had 100% MCAS pass in either advanced or proficient. So, wow, yeah. very good. Yeah. The, um, so it's a summary, okay, yep. of, of external report card type measurements. The next page is um, consistent with your question earlier, Mark. We make a one-time request. We don't come back. We don't edit. We don't amend. Uh, we live with what we have. And, you know, uh, but unlike a town department, we have a number of expenses that are built into the budget. And here is a sample of some of them, okay, so that... Uh, it's well known that uh, uh, local school systems, and we enjoy a 
I believe, a very positive relationship. Uh, certainly, I with your superintendent and, and school system to school system. And you can see the enrollment is, is on the upswing as well. Uh, but a town department can ask its community or its municipality to accept certain responsibilities, right, and shared. And then you, maybe you put them back in when you file Schedule 19 or file with, with the state, right? And that's fair play. But we're not. We're not a town department. Okay, and so uh, we have to ask for it, build it in, and live with it. Okay, so these are some of the expenses that are all in all inclusive budget requests that's before you. So, uh, and you can see, even on the uh, there's a little comment made by a veteran town administrator here, the veteran the town administrator from Northbridge. Uh, it's just an indication of the relationship we have with the 13 town managers. I expect next year to see a quote from Mr. Brassad. That's what I was thinking. I was, where's my quote? <laughs> you can be quoted about the approval of the debt. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You got to yeah. say something nice to get. I, well, yeah, I, well, well, Evan, I invite you to make you share the quote. We'll print it in next year. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. um, the next page is a summary list, a uh, snapshot of the grants, about 2.4 million, uh, that were secured when this document was printed. But as I pointed out in my earlier remarks, you have another 997 that you're counting on. Yeah, it was like another a good 600 or so. So we're wow. certainly going to. My letter promised three million. We'll get there. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So it was a reason. I don't know who's going to win the NCAA, but that's pretty good. <laughs> okay. All right. So and here's some of the grant. I would also point out, in fairness, that a, a vocational technical school uh, is eligible for certain grant money. A non-vocational school wouldn't be eligible. Okay, uh, so, but we're glad to help, and we've helped the town before, and we'll continue to do that. Okay, so here's a delineation of vote. Um, the next page is a summary of when you serve 13 towns, it's a challenge because our campus is placed in, is based rather in one community, not 13, and so we do our best to share developments to keep people posted. Uh, we've entered into some really interesting partnerships, including uh, Cat. Milton Cat or Southbrook Milton. <coughs> uh, in fact, that partnership will include the donation of two simulators. We currently have a backhoe simulator, okay, which is pretty pretty impressive. But we're looking at two new ones, okay. That that uh, they've helped. They're going to pay pay for pay them, okay. Wow, that's so, pretty good. Uh, and we're going to add additional money, some grant money, some local money, and their money, to to add two new simulators. And we have we're reconfiguring our square footage. Our campus is three hundred thousand square feet. Uh, we're, we're reconfiguring that with renovations now to make room for these two new simulators. So it's another great learning opportunity for construction technology and other students. Uh, we're also give, giving students a chance to get a hoisting license, okay, uh, within the age limitations, things like that. And so program after program, you certainly, when you think of health assistance, I, I think of almost merit badges for an Eagle Scout. I'm saying there's lots of different uh, credentials that can be earned. Uh, when you know from the engineering programs and so many of uh, the Cisco certifications it goes on and on and what we try hard to do is to increase the merit badges or the credentialings that every student can earn if they want in pursuit to improve their uh, employability improve their grant their scholarship earning skills and make it more appealing to college if they choose to go to college by the way industry now regularly recruits our students and offers them financial assistance to go to college as a as a recoup mechanism, so it's not one or the other. It's what's your number one? What's your number one program? Is it the construction area? No, no. Uh, the uh, construction is holding its own. Uh, it's come back strong. Uh, I think you're good. It's really competitive. Years ago, it would have been culinary arts, but culinary arts got seriously injured in COVID. In COVID, so yeah. it's not no. But that's what uh, well, that would have been. Now you, your engineering programs, uh, the biotechno, the brand new biotech program. Mm -hmm. With the room the laboratory primarily funded with a three quarters of a million dollars of a previous grant from the state, uh, is one of the most popular programs, and it's brand new. Nice. So, yeah. So, I have a question, and excuse my ignorance, coming from a, a place um, the, the state I, I used to live in had essentially zero vocational schools. That was Arizona. Um, is is your recruitment to your your institution just purely organic? Um, is it? What's your what's your acceptance rate? Because one thing I find interesting here is that there's zero dollars towards recruitment, which tells me that you're probably swatting them away. What, what, is, what does that look like? Only an Arizona person would use the word organic. <laughs> <laughs> probably, uh, probably. Uh, that's okay. Um, the um, there are 830 candidates for next year's freshman class. Wow. 
we don't have to invest much in recruitment. What's, so, the, what's the size that you bring in of the 800? Well, I say to the principal, not everybody comes every day. Take a few more. Take a few more. I used to say <laughs> that to Rich Brennan, too. Uh, but in any case, uh, 330, I hope. Wow. Uh, so you turn away more than half of the students that apply? Uh, yes. Wow. Okay. And you said it's blind. It's not by community. That's it's, right. It's a pool. That's correct. Okay. Interesting. Incredible. Now, I would point out, I want to answer that a little so the best recruiting is the success of our students. They're like ambassadors, okay? If I had high school kids, I desperately want them in this particular school system, okay? It's it's phenomenal, okay? It's it's certainly like a community college, right, to say the least. It's The academics are rigorous. Uh, the, the vocational skills are right on task. It's currently, the staff are constantly improving their skills. We're adding technology all the time. It's just not dull. 30 years ago, the total population arrived 660. Total school, four years. Wow. Now, 830 yeah. to get into the first, the ninth grade. Year alone. That's I mean, incredible. Imagine yeah. that number. Yeah. I mean, that's better than EMC split stocks <laughs> for so many years. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a system of rare appeal. We don't sell seats, we only draw from the district. Uh, we incur we, we're very interested in the interview process. There's no exam to get in there. Okay. Uh, the uh, you don't you don't have the eighth grade MCAT scores either. You don't have those things, right? Uh, the biggest aspect is they're asking the candidates in the interview process to indicate their commitment to pursue a trade. Why do you want to come to us? I mean, if you want to do something that's totally unrelated to the 18 vocational technical programs, probably not scoring as high in the interview. Another thing that's part of the process is the recommendation of the sending school counselor or the designee of the sending school. So they have a part in saying, this is the one who really can benefit. This, this youngster would. So, Do you have a wait list? Uh, yes, but that's a misnomer. Yeah. Um, to me, a wait list is like an on-deck circle, right? And what's the guarantee you're getting in with 830 applications, right? And so, yeah, you, and you can, re you can apply. You can apply even as a 10th grader or subsequent year. And so, many do, uh, but uh, not 830, but I'm just saying that. I I, yeah, but to me, I... I, I I just think it indicates like you've made a promise to somebody as soon as there's a whole, you know, like next in line, next in line. Well, the line doesn't end. Yeah, you know. that's true. Yeah. I think typically maybe we go 20 deep in in the wait list because some kids get cold feet and at the last minute want to go back to their, their hometown school and don't want to come to the regional school. But it probably doesn't go more than 15, 20 students deep. Understood. Now, what do your applications look like from your sophomore to senior year? Uh, I'd say about okay. four, like 40 or so apply for the sophomore class. Okay. Okay. Uh, it varies. I think one year there were 65 applications for the 10th grade. Uh, another thing that students do and with the guidance of parents and uh, guardians is they may apply to us and apply three other places. Could apply to St. John's, a parochial school, private school, charter school. A charter school is a public school, but okay, they can apply several places, like applying to three colleges or, or applying for three jobs. If you're offered them, you're only picking one. Yeah. It's to keep options open. Sure. So that that would be a factor in the 830, okay? Not everybody... Uh, That's still a healthy number regardless of the reason. 830 is a heck of a number. It, it, no question. No question. Yes. It's it's unbelievable. And that was before vocational schools became popular, which they have become more popular sure. with the economies. Did, did I answer your question? You did. Thank you so much. And the school That's is very busy. If you drive by any time, 7, 730... Uh, the, the school's usually bubbling with activity. I mean, we have 19 shops, 15 clubs, and 15 varsity sports, mm -hmm. along with student government and other things that, uh, you know, we have to push the kids out the door to get them to go home in yeah. most cases. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, um, what percent then, goes to college? Oh, well, Sorry, nobody goes home. That's what <laughs> no. Say. No. What Her percent question? goes to college <laughs> after BBT? What, how many? What percentage, percentage? hundred percent nowadays. They're all going to college. Yeah, after yeah. Maybe. industry will take them and subsidize their college, uh, full time, part time, after hours. So yeah, yeah. I say that because the number just continues to grow. Okay, but that's you don't go to college for a living. True. Well, wait a minute. You I introduce you to one of my friends who was a professional student. <laughs> go ahead, Dan. But what about like the trades, like like plumbing? Are they <clears throat> Yeah. What somebody who goes to BBT for plumbing? What are they going to college for? Uh, they would. Well, there are 66 students in the plumbing program. 
okay? And so there's, uh, that's on a, a rebound in itself. The kids are willing to take plumbing. Uh, I spoke to a kid, a young man who finished the plumbing program with the Nichols College to pick up a business degree so he could run the business. Okay. That's an example of a graduate that I spoke with recently. Uh, plumbing is a major commitment as far as the hours, the apprenticeship, the licensing. That's a lot. But there's 66 students in plumbing now. So there's, that's, that's where it begins in the farm system, the feeder system. All right. And uh, there's a shortage of plumbers, there's a shortage of electricians, there's a shortage of dental assistings, you name it. But not just here, everywhere. Right. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's kind of what I worry about, which I guess maybe getting a little bit away from budget, but those other students who don't get in, what's their pathway into the trades? I mean, there is a huge shortage. Um, yeah. So. Well, it, it, it's an interesting philosophical discussion, number one. I mean, uh, the the student, it's, it's interesting. The student has lobbied for themselves in an interview that they want to pursue the trades. That's how they got in. So if they're honest, if they're sincere, there's a commitment, then you've taken the student who had a deep commitment to the trade to get in to outcompete against 829 others to get it. There's no one. The, the, the student, I, I don't like to say no to any student. Uh, f some five years ago, I asked to expand. I asked for 2.9 million to be able to say yes to more kids, right? And five towns said no. You didn't say no, but they did. So your other partner said no. So that prevented us from saying yes to more kids, giving more kids it. One of the things we do is we offer uh, support to career education programs. All students should have career education. That's not full-fledged vocational technical education. I mean, if you come to us, every other week you go, you're spending a full week in the shop with integrated academics, but a full, you know, uh, if you're in a non-vocational school, you might have an hour or two in career education. After. But we, we, we've helped, we've trained, we've had people come in to get information about our schools for welding and other kinds of programs uh, to assist students who didn't get in. We took this, these um, mill facility in Northbridge and helped renovate it to offer after our vocational career education programs for, school, for students who were in the area schools who may or may not get into our school. So we do what we can to be a good friend. Um, so um, Many of our shop students, when they graduate, they put their portfolios together, come in wanting to learn a trade, but as they go through the BVT program, they become interested in actually running their own business in that trade. And that sends them off to college. That, yeah. it, or a two-year you know, yeah. business certificate program. On, that makes on, sense. And how to, you know, to how to run their own business with their own van, things like that. Um, we have a pretty, pretty detailed um, program of of tutoring the incoming students. We we get students at varying degrees of mathematical ability and and, and other because we don't grades are I think only about twenty percent of the consideration now, if that it might even be eighteen percent of, of of the consideration coming into the school. And we, we tie math into the, 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 the trade programs. And students that may have, an, uh, you know, uh, may not be the greatest in math or may have uh, some sort of apprehension, even, even when you bring that subject in front of them, start to learn how it ties into their, their trade. They use examples from their shops to help them to understand math concepts. And as they progress in their in in their career at BVT, just as an example, start to understand that hey, I'm I'm actually better in math than I thought, and it's not so daunting, and they actually become better students in many cases. So sometimes as they get toward senior year, they start thinking a little bit differently because they feel a little bit better about their their skill set in academics because we tie it into how how they approach their shop and the work that they do in their shops. In today's society, the, the pathway to employment is very varied, okay? It's just a told, it's not linear like it might have been in my day, okay? Uh, the, the students just diversify in so many different directions. Uh, I, I, I mentioned the Milton Cat experience. So I went over to Milton Cat to have a tour to look at some of the equipment and foster this partnership. And I saw one of our graduates there, and I was kind of surprised because she was in cosmetology. And so I was inquired, and she graduated from cosmetology, uh, where she learned customer relations and a number of other let, set up skills and logistics. Then she went to the Johnson Wales, got a business degree, and then she applied for a position at Milton Cat, 
worldwide heavy equipment diesel operation, and she works in the HR department. Wow. Well, if you're saying you never went in cosmetology, that's true, <laughs> okay, but she ended up fully employed. Well, she got the foundation to go on to college to transferable get skills. Today. Yeah, I'd call them. But I'm saying that that's a different path today. Uh, and the fact that, you know, uh, the industry is changing so dramatically. I see the picture on the bottom of the, the page we're on now, and it highlights the biotechnolo biotechnology program. Uh, Waters Corporation, okay, they'll take every graduate right now. They'll take, they'll take them as soon as they can get them, okay, for industry again. Uh, so there's plenty of opportunities and encouragement. Some industries have not been that competitive as far as recruiting. Uh, and they, they changed it. They've changed their approach. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they helped to subsidize college education and not, if you turn, if you say to somebody, you can't go to school, you're, you're a plumber. Face it, you're a plumber. You're not going to school. What you end up doing is presenting obstacles for the student to consider going into plumbing because you've already taken away options. Yeah. And so you don't want that to happen. I'm delighted to see 66 kids in plumbing, okay, because that's, that's 20, 20, 26 more than the last time I looked. Uh, so it, it, and it, it means that more students are recognizing the potential. Uh, if you look at the companies uh, in the area, many of them are Valley Tech graduates. The Grafton has a number of businesses of Valley Tech graduates who are in the trades uh, who have hired other Valley Tech students and everyone they can get their hand on. So there's a feeder system, there's a reward system, uh, but we're only one school. Well, you're doing a you're doing a great job, and I want to thank you very much for the excellent presentation you gave us tonight. Thank you. It's very you. good uh, information. And I think it was very helpful to us to understand why the budget Thanks. is what it is. Thank you. We take pride, and and it's an honor to to share it. Well, Thanks. thank you for being here tonight, the both of you. Appreciate your time. Good health to everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Keep eating our garden vegetables. <laughs> That's right. I will. <laughs> Have a nice evening. Take thank care. You. Um, next on the agenda is to continue our review of the uh, town clerk's budget. So Saturday when the town clerk was here, she had a proposal for a 26% pay increase. Uh, we asked some questions about that. She said she would come back tonight and she would provide us with a salary survey of communities that was supposed to come out on Monday. Uh, Monday I received word from Amber that uh, she did not get the information and she was not planning on coming back to see us tonight, wasn't gonna be here. So uh, yesterday my town clerk got the survey. So I contacted Evan. I asked him for a list of the towns that we used when Evan did his salary survey last January. And so I took those and I went in and I looked at the salaries and I did the survey that the town clerk promised us that she would provide for us tonight. I also, uh, there was one town that was missing on the survey, Sutton. So I called the Sutton Town Hall today and I got that. So I have the survey. I sent it out. I have an update because I added um, Sutton. You guys have it over there, right? That's right. Um, yes. Yeah. Is, is that enough copies? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then give Dan, give William and uh, Amber. You have it to put it up for the people that are watching to, to see it. And I sent it to Amber this afternoon. So, when you look at the survey, on the I think there's what 26 towns, Evan, that was that were used. 27 towns that were used. 27 towns that were used. The average salary was 82,554. Uh, substantially lower than the 90 um, number that the town clerk was requesting and I'm a, I'm a little confused on the survey Grafton was listed at 77,000 and your budget has it in at 74,250 that's the number I put here for the average but it the survey that I, I assume our town clerk filled out at 77 is that because of their stipends involved yes okay so, so she gets a $77,000 salary Mary correct me if I'm wrong on that this is the part where Mary. Yeah, I, I believe um, Candy receives eighteen hundred dollars in stipends. Oh, that doesn't get to. That doesn't get to right. seventy-seven. So I don't know where that the number that she had in the survey was seventy-seven. So I assume they got that from Candy, but I I don't I don't know. Okay. Um, but anyway, I had seventy-four is the number yep. that I have listed yep. here. That's what we did in fiscal twenty-three. Okay, so I don't think ninety is a justifiable number based on. The comparisons that we have here that's just my opinion but i be i really want to hear from all of you on what you think is is reasonable uh to, to support i'm looking if she's at say the 77 is the right number and 82 is the average i would support a salary of eighty thousand dollars 
I think that's a reasonable increase. But I want to hear from everybody else. Go ahead, Angelina. Well, I want to know what happened when Evan did the survey. When he didn't you do the survey when you came in? Mm -hmm. And so why is she at seventy four? If everybody else has more. If everybody else has more. If the uh, if the average is substantially higher than that. So, a, a couple things. One. There are towns in here that are weighted differently, which you're not going to do. I didn't your... weight right, exactly. But so, like, we're not in direct competition with, say, Marlboro. Mm -hmm. Marlboro is a city. Yeah. We want their data because they're in our theoretical catchment of where a staff member could go. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to weight that data the same that we're going to weight a town that is of similar size, economics, and and uh, budget. I looked at the survey that you sent to answer your question. Yeah. It had the comps within two thousand mm -hmm. dollars of so the ones that they weighted, mm -hmm. the salary that our town clerk is at was within two thousand dollars of the weighted community. So okay. it was competitive, and you made an adjustment to make it competitive. Okay. I expanded this because when she came to see us on Saturday, she said she wanted to see all this data, and she was going to provide it to us, which she did not. So I provided it to you because I think we need to see that before we make an informed decision on what we're going to recommend to the town administrator for the budget. So does that except, answer your question? Yeah, Okay. except it's not weighted. It, this is not weighted. Yeah. It's not. So weighted, she's she's where she she's should be. good. So, so what, go ahead, what, Skip. What's the phrase weighted mean? When you, when you take the, the communities that we were going to compare Grafton to that got more weight in the salary schedule, in the salaries, on the average salary, than all of these communities. Right, so, like, so, we're not directly competitive. No, okay. Marlboro, so, no, I, so, it's so what, my my, my first question when I looked at this was: the salaries that are there on the schedule are they all for thirty-five hours a week, forty hours a week? Most of these are, are forty hours. Yeah. So, just just straight up to make them all read the same. Then there's a lot of different weighting factors you could add into them. But Correct. I think we were talking if if they were by and large 40 hours a week, mm -hmm. we're at 35, so that she's at the what you would consider to be the average pay for all of those when you adjust for the fact that she works 35 instead of 40. Hours a week? She's a thir she's a 35 hour week. No, yeah. So when you start like fooling around with okay. how many people are in the even just stay how many people are in the towns if you wanted to say okay try and develop, you know, like you get paid $5,000 a year per 10,000 people that live in the town. You, you know, that's another way of weighting that. So strictly speaking, she's in the middle of the pack. She is. Without considering anything about the size of the town or, or qualification or time on the job or any of that kind of stuff. One of the things, too, when you look at the survey that was done for Evan last year, it wasn't done on annual salaries. It was done on hourly right. rates, right. which eliminates the problem that Skip is doing. I did right. not... No, I have a full-time job. I didn't have right. time to go through and do do all of this. I, right. I, I did this because the Tom clerk said she was going to do it, and she didn't yeah. do it, so I did it. Um, so I, I think a 26% increase is not necessary. I would not ever support a 26% increase in, in any fiscal times. But in light of the information that, that's in front of us in terms of comparable salaries and everything else, I think our town clerk salary is very competitive mm -hmm. with other communities. That's yeah. my opinion. But I'm willing to consider something if she's at 77 say or 70 in, in 76 yeah. something in in 50 in in fiscal 24 and again mary correct me if i'm wrong which again is mary's opportunity to correct me. <laughs> um she'd be around 77 500 ish 77 591 in fiscal sense. 24 and that's what the stipends and everything else no that's that's just that's taking the 73 250 and adding the, a step and a cola like we oh. did with everybody with everybody else, else. Yeah. so if yeah. we're, if we're following a grade yeah. so so, the, sorry, so she's a step she's in a grade seven now right yes what step this is where i look at mary on the screen yeah so because i looked at <laughs> so, i looked at the salary I, survey and I'll I a step three had, and a half Hold on go ahead mary. i had candy classified when i started the budget at Seven five step seven five, um, which would have been forty two forty nine an hour, and it would have come out to seventy seven thousand three hundred thirty two dollars. 
You were close. I was, uh, very good. You, you that's town administrator math for you. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. That's very good. It's 77, 250. 77, so 350. The next, the next step up, four point, if it's seven, six, would bring it to 79,261. And 7.7 seven would bring you to $81,245. So it's the way that the classification system works is you get a step raise and a COLA every until you hit the maximum number. Yep. She's three Correct. steps away from the maximum number now? Or no, we steps? have a 12-step system. Oh, so she's got a long way to go mm -hmm. to get to the max. Yeah. Yep. And so, that was, uh, not to interrupt, no, please. but I think it's fair. Um, <laughs> I do that to you all the time. Yeah, I know, yes, so thank you. I got no, that. Um, no I, I, like we, we were very cognizant of putting people into the grid at like the next the next highest step. We did have conversations with some people that have been here for twenty years. You know, all of those things that go into a wage and classification study. Um, the idea with doing it was to not only make us more competitive with our peer towns, but also to give employees room for growth. So that they're not just bumping not up against staggered. the top and getting their two percent, because as we know, that's what ma makes people look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and and so that that's I think the driving force of Mary's seven five. Um, all right. Decision. So based on based on all of that, based on this survey that we did, I think a reasonable number, if we wanted to do a little extra to be some of the extra work that she was talking about the other night in terms of elections and such. I would be willing to support the 79,261. Now, she gets stipends on top of that, so that'll put her up over 80. Mm -hmm. So well, I think that's... The stipend is for certification and um, longevity. Yep. What are her stipends? No. Um, it's $1,000 for her state stipend. What's the 800 for, Mayor? That's for the election and registration stipend. Oh, okay. That's okay. So you throw 1800 on top of that, she's at $81,000. Right. The average on this particular is 82,554. I think that is a reasonable salary for that position for fiscal year 24, if we want to support, if the finance committee wants to support. So you're saying 70? 79,261, which would put her, what's that step, Mary, you said step 7.5? Yep, 7.6. Seven, so she'll be, yep. I, I mean, I think that when Evan did the survey in the first place, he put her right where she, should, she should be, and she's going to be at 77.5 plus 1,800, which is going to get her. Close to Yeah, 80. I yeah. mean, I, I don't. I was just throwing out a number. I know. I'll support whatever the whatever can, the can I mention says. one other thing that Please. just came up after the, the meeting. Uh, we looked at other employees in the building that are outside of the classification study that we did already. And, mm -hmm. and by and large, any of those are based upon them being in areas that are extremely difficult to hire, right? So when we lose a treasurer collector, which is vital to the organization, and you can't get anybody to apply at your salary, then you have to do other things. Um, and we see that a lot in, in the finance world right now because of the amount of pressure that is on the municipal employee in those areas. Tom Littleton um, is offering $110,000 for a treasurer they can't find one. Yeah. Think about it. So mm -hmm. I, you're right. There are certain it, positions you got to pay more for. We, right. We lost. And this is an elected position. Correct. That you run for. Right. right. For now. So, so, you know, you'll see on that list treasurer collector. Well, we lost our treasurer collector, collector to Shrewsbury. And, and we wound up paying almost what they went exactly to Shrewsbury for. Because guess what? That's the number that got people to move from some other town. Yep. It's just how it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I think, we, you know, we've done a really fair job of running the salary classification in Grafton. I think we've given consideration to people that have that have asked for it, that we've gone back and, and looked at, but um, you know, o overall, I, I, I think we're running this in a very fair I manner. think you are, too. I, I've changed my mind. Um, Angelina, and you have convinced me that I'm too generous and I'm wrong. So um, I would ask for a motion from the Finance Committee so what number are you well, looking 77, at? 77,500 would be step 66, six, what it would be what in the it, budget. What it's in the budget. That's my currently. position, though. What's the matter? You look, you look confused. Yeah, we're just, we're not making any motions and stuff like that now. Why wouldn't we? We'll just wait till we approve the budget. We want to let Evan yeah. know what number to carry in the budget that he brings well, back to us. I think we got to give him a number. Oh. Because right now well, he's carry carrying. carry whatever you're carrying. No, he's carrying 90,000. 
I don't want to carry nine. You put ninety thousand in. Maybe you're not putting that. You're suggesting in the budget that you gave us. Yeah, let's just. This is what I did. I put Candy's request in here. Correct. That's what I had told Candy that I was going to do, Mm -hmm. and that we would go to the finance committee. Mm -hmm. Finance committee would then recommend to me what they thought we should bring to town meeting. So I want a motion. And that. So moved. Put a number in that motion, please. What's the number up there? 77,500. 77,500. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Can, can I it's have It's actually $77,332. Oh, it's that's, too late. This is what I was going to say. Go ahead. Yeah. Can we just amend that to match our salary yes. grid? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that we're not... Yeah. Match the salary... So okay. it's 77,330. The number that, that, um, that Mary step, just gave us. Step seven... Step six point six. Seven point seven. Seven point seven. Five. Step It's seven oh five. Right? We'll get to this eventually. All right, it, right. It, but Just Mary, hold, seven stop five. talking. Mary, seven, seven five. The salary for seven five equals seventy seven thousand three hundred thirty two dollars. All right, so seven five. To, to make yeah, yeah, to make Evan happy, my motion is that she be put in the budget at. Seven, grade seven. seven, step five. Correct. Is there a second? second. Which is 77,332. Correct. Either, is, either way. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Those abstaining? One abstention. So the vote is seven in, seven in favor? One abstention. Did I get that right? I didn't see it. Against one. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. So that takes care of the... Um, the town clerk issue can while we're on well, go ahead can we go back to the bvt yes of for, course. I, this wasn't a budget thing which i so i didn't want to bring it up then and i'm not even sure if this is the forum for it or not but like in my mind as i'm listening to them talk i think bvt is a great program i think the kids that go there are very successful and it's wonderful <clears throat> i also think that there's a need in our town for kids who can't get into BVT to have access to some kind of a um, trades school. Um, And, you know, to see the enrollment going up and up and up and our assessment, you know, at 15,600 per student, something like that. um, You know, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, what if half of those kids were going to BVT and the other half like if we had 50 kids going to BVT and we could take that other money and send kids to a regular trade school um, where kids who normally go to a trade school would be able to get in. Um, you know, just the fact that most of these kids go to college, that um, the, the MCAS scores, like these aren't the kids who normally end up in a trade school. Some of them are. Most of them aren't. I would argue that most of these kids would be successful no matter what school they went to. You are going to see kids applying to BVT and St. John's. Like, that's not the kids who are normally going to a trade school. And I I don't know, like, just looking at, okay, so in a couple of years now, we're going to have debt related to this. So we're, like, making this where it feels like we're in a little bit of a transition because our debt is running out and now we're going to be looking at taking on another bond to be involved in this and it and it's at the level of how many students we have enrolled so like i said i don't know if this is the forum i don't know if i'm out on an island by myself here um but i just feel like we're spending a lot of money on this and i do think that there's a need in our town that isn't being met for kids who would need a regular trade school type of program and i don't know if this has been talked about at all if the school if we if i should be talking to the school committee about it or like where this discussion even originates i could take a crack at this go ahead and whack me if i get too far off course they certainly are the kids that go to trade schools this was our trade school geographically speaking 30 years ago, I started, before we started this round of funding, and we had a number of discussions about how we were going to do it, or different stuff. The dynamic has changed. They, 
you can't just go to a trade school and learn a trade anymore. Hmm, you have yes. to be educated to the same level no. as kids going to high school. So that's, that's not true. That's, that's not true. Because there are trade schools around here that are like traditional trade schools. And uh, frankly, like, so I know kids who didn't get into BVT who applied who wouldn't be successful at BVT because of how rigorous the academics are and how competitive it is. Like you can't take a kid who just needs to learn how to be a mechanic. Like you, these are the kids who are running the business, not the kids who are doing the work, who are coming out of BVT now. There is still a need for the kids to learn to fix the cars who don't want to own the business, who want to just be mechanics. You're correct, and the school system has had a lot of students falling through the cracks for many years, and and vocational schools have changed so much <clears throat> that they're really more academic oriented than they are trade oriented. And I don't know how legally we could take <clears throat> students away from them, you know, and send them to someplace else. I think there'd be a lot of logistics we'd have to look at because I don't think, but that wouldn't stop them from continuing to take the same amount of students they're taking now. It doesn't change anything. Because well, all I those think students... it does because they, you know, he said on uh, one side that we asked for more students there and out the other side that it doesn't matter, it's blind admission. So I'm not sure what's happening with that discussion. But the, like, when these... he has 800,000, 800 students right. applying for freshman year, mm -hmm. we're not going to reduce that number. But that's what I'm saying is that those kids, so if, if, the, if the number was reduced and we could take that funding and put it, partner with another trade school that was like, I'm not saying get rid of BVT, that's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying that it's filling one very specific need for one small group of kids and the kids who would go to a trade school it, I mean, you can say that they're all academic. That's not true. All well, of the I trade schools that. are not the same. What I don't understand what you're saying is if you take some of those, how are you going to determine what students you're going to take out of there? I'm saying that the kids who are getting into BVT would be successful no matter where they went. I understand that. But so if they don't some... go to BVT, they're going to be fine. It's other. It's not the same group of kids. It's not like this pool of kids is going to BVT. Now half of them are going to go to a regular trade school. I'm saying the kids who aren't even getting, like they're, they're not getting into BVT because it's too rigorous, that... would go to a regular trade school. Yeah, I Am I don't making think sense? You are making I perfect not? sense. I'm just thinking that that's a discussion I think you should have with the school committee. I don't know if yeah. we're going to solve it. Our job right now is to say we really don't have much to say when it comes to the assessment that comes from BBT. No, we, we have haven't. to pay it. Um, unless the town, we could recommend to town meeting not to, but then five other communities would have to recommend. Right. And that's, not, I and think that's, the school committee needs to look at I think the school all committee the needs kids to address that Angela's are falling point. through the crack and yeah. what they can do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's a, Dan, go ahead, quick, please. One quick comment on that. So what, what you're saying is exactly what my concern was about the kids who don't get into BBT. You know, what's, what's their pathway into the trades? Um, but also with, with what he was saying about uh, likely coming to us for uh, uh, like a debt exclusion or something next year, whatever the, the process is for, for that debt. Um, it sounded to me like that's not about expanding. That's about maintaining what they have. Mm -hmm. So correct. I yep. guess like, but our proportion of the debt is related to number our, of students in the school the, system. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I I definitely agree. Like this. we have a lot of skin in the game. I we, guess is what I'm saying. Like we're putting okay. all of these resources towards this thing. Ninety which ninety is seven great. students is a lot of kids. Well, fifteen thousand six hundred dollars each is a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So well, secondary I, is always higher. High school's higher than elementary, hmm. even in our school district. Right, I know, but we're <clears> spending <throat> what, like nine thousand a the, student. The problem, the problem though, is, is they are a, we, our school system is K through twelve. So we have one superintendent for K through twelve. They have one superintendent for nine through twelve. They have the same administrative overhead mm -hmm. for a smaller school, which drives up the um, the average per student cost. Go ahead, Evan. Just. One thing I always think of, because this is the conversation in every community I've ever watched the budget process in. Um, and and so one thing that uh, actually was my woodshop teacher who was on the finance committee in Munson, which was awkward. Um, but he had said 
and I, I've always taken this to heart, you just need to ask yourself, so BVT, do we like the product that they're producing? If the answer is yes, then you, you stay with the funding that they've requested and you figure out how to then make the other schools whose product you, you maybe don't like as much the same, right? So, so rather than talking about um, BVT and, and what they do or don't do, I think by and large, those 97 kids are going to come out if you listen to their placement and their, their, where they go after. It's, it's an overwhelmingly good story. Um, so I think that the conversation, and maybe, Angelina, this is what you're saying, is the kids that, that don't get in, what can the Grafton School District do to support, to support them to get to their next step? So mm -hmm. I, I think it's a... I think I, I I don't I don't know of any other school besides BVT that's that's producing the the, the level of no I'm not there's not, but it's who they're taking it's the students yeah, they're, that they're not, taking they're not like taking, these aren't like, the struggling students and turning them right. around in mass no they're taking the top students exactly yeah. and and you know nurturing them and and right. bringing out their potential but that's they're, they're taking saying. the students who can do that and so i worry would, about the students who are being left behind like right but how is that their problem <laughs> it's, it's it's not it's, their i problem. mean it's not. it's not their problem but right. it's our it's the town's we only problem have so that this is in. the school and that's a right. discussion. So because it depends right. on where you live which yeah. rec, which uh trade school you're correct going to yeah. so I appreciate the conversation. Great philosophical conversation. Out of the realm of the finance committee, I wanted to get us back on track, if that's okay. So thank you. I think that's you raised very good points. I think this, a school committee conversation makes a lot of sense because the school committee at the local level has to solve for the kids that are falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. They can't get into BVT. So that's just my two cents on the subject. Right. Um, back to the agenda. The next thing related to the town clerk, we talked about this on Saturday. Poll pads. She wants additional poll pads, which we think is a great idea. There's a reserve fund transfer request for $8,225 uh, to pay for those. I believe it's five additional poll pads. I entertain a motion from the Finance so Committee. Moved. Is second. there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous. Uh, we have a bill for Bushel and Peck for $161.69. I'd entertain a motion to approve that invoice. Will we pay Mark's lunch bill? So moved. <laughs> second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous. Um, all right. Back to the agenda. Um, I just want to bring something up before I forget so I don't, I don't forget to bring it up. Next Tuesday at the select board meeting, uh, Representative Meridian is coming in to the meeting, and we had asked to have a meeting with him. And in talking to the chair of the select board, we thought having the school committee, the finance committee, and the select board all at the same meeting to talk to Representative Meridian would be a great idea. And so Colleen was able to schedule that next Where's Monday. Where's the senator? Um, I don't think he's available that night, but he did give other dates that he may come. Yes. So he wasn't available that night. Okay. He had another commitment, and he will be coming to the uh, to a, a future. I think he gave you some dates, you said, right? So, But I would love to see us. I would ask Amber to please post a meeting of the Finance Committee for Tuesday at 7. It's first on the agenda for Tuesday at 7 o'clock, and I'll plan on being there. I hope a, a majority of us can attend that meeting. I think it's a good conversation to at least let the representative know that BVT is getting $488 per student and Grafton's getting $30 per student. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What's going on? Let's do something about it. And I think that's the conversation I think we have to have with him. I will also tell you my other capacity. I'm fortunate enough I'm going to be talking to the chair of the Committee on uh, Ways and Means of the House, the chair of that committee, uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, and I'm going to explain to him my my i won't get on my soapbox again this week evan um but you didn't do that already i know that's, oh, <laughs> that's a good point um so we'll 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 be talking about that so please tuesday at seven o'clock here in this room right in this room for that meeting um back to the agenda one of the things that i want we had asked evan to do for us is give us an idea of revenue projections for next year um do you have something you want to share with us sure I've logged myself out of the Zoom though. <laughs> One second. Here, email it to me. I'm going to email it to Will and he's going to share it. Technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's faster to email it. I did log out of the Zoom and then Will leaned over and said, 
You know, you're supposed to be doing revenue projections, right? Okay, thanks, Paul. One of us has to pay attention. Yeah, yeah, you're on the ball today. Mm. Emphasis on today. I had a giant sandwich from Bushel and Peck for lunch, and I'm, I'm off. <laughs> the meat sweats all afternoon. <laughs> Good. Looks good. Do we have to send you to BVT, William? <laughs> is it what? Well, is it William or Evan? No, I went to public school. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you should be able to get this. Wait, did you go to the Wilbraham Munson Academy? Me? Yeah. No, it's where the rich kids go. Why did you take it away? What is happening, William? Uh, you shut your computer off. Again, I went to public school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Evans, if you want to walk us through it. Okay, so uh, I'll, I will share this document out uh, with all of you. Um, Mary and I are continuing to work on it because we have to upgrade our or update our fiscal 24 projections. Um, but if you look at this, um, you will see that we've, we've projected out to fiscal 28, um, our levy limit, debt exclusion, capital expenditure exclusion, um, stabilization. Uh, we've also got what we thought was going to be in the cherry sheet and one of the things I want to call your attention to is that um, our educational aid is not um, is not what we thought it was going to be when we first started building this the 12 so, six was the number that you thought you were going to get but it's 12 four uh, no Mary what's the offset here is Mary still on here yes okay so any, anyways it no, we've got the twelve seven. That's plugged in now. Oh, okay. but it, that's the right number. But it, 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 what I'm saying is it cascaded all the rest of the numbers. Down. Gotcha. Um, so what we were, we had, we had put into our projection here that our chapter seventy was going to hover around three percent. That's the number we had put in. Um, in looking at the, and I, I don't want to talk out of school, but the schools expected chapter seventy was about four point four, and of course we got point seven. So that trends the whole that whole number down. Um, you'll also see our estimated local receipts and the growth there. It's pretty moderate growth. We specifically trend that down a little bit to keep that lean so that we're never over estimating what we're gonna do. Um, we also capture sewer direct costs and everything. Can you go over to the one that says expenditures? Can be pleasantly surprised when the receipts go above. So you'll see here, this is our projections for each department that we have in the town of Grafton. Again, out to fiscal 28. And so um, what you'll notice if you look at the green chart on the right, that is the percentages in which we're uh, or prescribing to each line and the amount of growth that we can sustain there um, without running afoul of, of what we're going to get. So your projected budget meets your projected revenues without the need of an override? In theory, yes. In theory. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. On the public safety personnel, it says 2% increase. I'm assuming that's across the board. Does that take into consideration the fact that you want to throw an additional officer in there next year? Uh, not yet. Okay. And that's one of the things why I wanted to we're, – we're, we're still building, building this. this. Yeah, this um, is good. And we do have another document that we're – we're working on that is our personnel forecast, mm -hmm. which we then will take to refine this. Okay. Um, so this will just continue to get better. Um, I think this, this is, is excellent. This is the this is the the basic forecast is what I would say. This gets us in the ballpark. Um, so what's the bottom line on the forecast? Go all the way down there. Buddy. So. Total town, uh, where are we here? So you'll see that total general fund and special articles. Yep. That's where we should be um, with everything included. If you go up to total operating budget, Will, uh, it is line 53. I can't read a thing, but go ahead. Keep talking. Uh, I'm going to email this out okay. to you, Sue. I just didn't want to do it ahead because I didn't want okay. you people asking yep. a lot of questions. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think Greg, I, Greg will go through and find 400 typos. I'm sure I don't have he time will for that today. <laughs> but but I think what this does this sets this is a good document that can be refined to show correct to to do a lot of work. This is something that I know the finance committee Sue you and Heather and I uh, had been asking yep. for as, as much as six years ago, and we mm -hmm. could never get this. Yep. We this is exactly what we're looking we for. We get good numbers. This no, either. this is excellent. This this spreadsheet is all tied to all these other tabs, so as you make changes, it upgrades the whole yep. document. Um, the other thing, if you could just go over to where it says assumptions, this is one of the features I like the most about it. And can you make that bigger because Sue can't see it? <laughs> Enhance. That's good. <laughs> okay. So what you'll see is these are the factors that we're, we're, these are the assumptions that we're basing all of the rest of the document on. So as our assumptions need to change, i.e. Chapter 70 changes, uh, we add a police officer, whatever those things are, we capture those assumptions here and then tie that back out to the numbers after. This that. is, this is wow. phenomenal. The, this is exactly that. what we've been asking for for years and years and years. 12. Wow! Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you will you will have access to that I, again. I just want to stress, we're still working on it. No, no, no. It's and, a it's a good it's a good template to build on. Yeah. We it took us a long time to get to here, and and I'm going to steal of, this. You should. Part of the reason is that it took us so long to get to here is because we're we were as you know when we got here and we had Softwrite and all the rest of it, we had trouble building our financials off of that platform. Mm -hmm. um, ClearGov is allowing you to do this. It, it is, it's helping us, yes. Um, so, and and I will say, just so that everybody's clear, this is this is uh, Mary's baby, she's the driving force. Of so are you saying it's Mary I have to steal, not your spouse? Correct, okay. correct. Mary, we'll talk. Yeah, you could try, but. <laughs> Like I'm, 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 gonna try I'm to joking. Mary I'm lock. joking. Yeah. I love my town account. I'm Listen, joking. you go anywhere near Mary, we'll have a problem. <laughs> um, so no, but the Mary has put a ton of work into this. Uh, you know, she and I have worked on it together. Sure, but she really. Uh, no, I, I think this is fantastic. Out. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, this is really good. So I will get this out to all of you. I, again, feel free to give me give us any feedback you want. Yep. Just know that we know that it's being refined. Understood. Okay. I see you're, you're contemplating a split tax rate at this point. No. No. It just shows up in these are these are these are things that you want to make sure that you're capturing here so that you understand the rest of the document. Because okay. this sh this should eventually be a uh, and it is because it's my document, but it should be a public document that we embed into our budget book okay. that shows you this. So. Keep in mind that the things in the in the in the um, assumptions are meant to be swallowable by the general public as well. They so, need to understand. It. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. This I mean, is, that's that's the and this for. this format is very understandable. That's our excellent that's our goal. excellent work. Excellent. excellent so work. you're still thinking cannabis is going to bring in some revenue? No. no, no, no. And so what, again, when we presented this. Originally, right. those are our assumptions. Okay. We know some of these assumptions are now false. We have not up here updated fiscal 24 <clears throat> with our current uh, uh, assumptions. One, because we're still working on fiscal 24. But two, you know, we've been mm -hmm. engaged in other things. So what we will do is we will get through fiscal 24. That budget will pass. We will then go back, refine our assumptions based on the new data we have and what we got from the state and yada, and then yada, yada this. And then upgrade this. And then you'll be ready for FY25. Correct. And that's our that's our plan. And and Perfect. this should not sit idle for more than a month or two throughout the budget cycle without you coming back and saying, All right, what is what has changed? And so Mary and I are are sharing the responsibility of making tweaks that then Mary will have to fix my my <laughs> Your tweaks. tweaks. Exactly. Um, but I uh, so, one of the things I love, yeah, if I could just good. digress one more time, Please. is that I can go in and plug in different what if scenarios to then see where we're going to end up which is fantastic for me because i'm always trying trying to look at well if i if we did this and we got this what does that do and this this document does that for us so uh we will share this with you we will also and it probably will not be before the summertime maybe even after the fall share with you the document that we're preparing that is for personnel forecasting um because we're we're really in the infancy of that, but but yeah, it's coming together. I think awesome. we're going to have excellent some, work. This is really nice because it's a working document which we've never had before. 
it was never a working document. So mm -hmm. this is it was like pulling teeth asking. No, it yeah. didn't. It was a non-working document. Yeah, it was non-working. This not this is just. He's going to have a field day with this thing. I, mean, I, I got to be honest with you, it's kind of my nightmare. <laughs> 45 emails from Greg. And in Greg's defense, it does yeah. say right there, split tax rate consistently 1% shift to CIP. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I see it. Okay. <laughs> Hence why you don't have it yet. <laughs> Hoping to get through this meeting. When, you, when you're ready to send it to us. No, we, we can okay. send it with the, the caveat that we know that there are some Things that we're still There's working. Okay, do, I love it. Yeah. Um, um, all right, thank you very much. Any other questions on that? I want to thank you, Evan, for doing that. My next question: uh, We're not in a position to vote the budget, obviously, because you have to do some refining. So we'll wait till the public hearing on the on the yes. warrant Great. for that. But I think we're in good shape. I think we've done. There were really no surprises on Saturday uh, to the main budget. I think we're really happy with the school budget where we are. Uh, BVT, we have really have no choice. We've taken care of the town clerk issue. So I think we're in good shape for you to refine your numbers and then come back to us during yep. the public hearing. Absolutely. So the upcoming dates for the finance committee meeting, we're going to Tuesday, obviously. And then, Amber, when did we say we were going to do the first, the, the two public hearings on the warrant? Those should be Wednesday, April 19th, and Thursday, April 20th. Is that okay for everybody? Uh, we only I'm, need two. Yikes. Well, what's I the, think what, so. What's... What's the warrant looking like? How many warrants are we looking at now? They haven't what closed yet, right? No, not yet. That's school vacation week, and I'm aware. I, I have no oh. estimate on the number. We, we're not that uh, far. We're still collecting citizen school. petitions. And so, 20, like, do you have 600 maybe. citizen no, petitions? It's going to be probably around, we probably are at 25 total articles, not citizens' petitions, counting citizens' petitions. Probably around 20. Two nights is enough, so, but we can't oh, do it that week. That's school vacation week, and half of you aren't going to be yeah. available. So. When is the town meeting? May 9th. May 8th, sorry. May when do we have to post the warrant? When do we have to post the warrant? April 21st is the last day to post. Shoot. So we have so no have choice. To we have so to meet that. Or the week before. Early. Do you want to do the week before? Are you going to be ready we're for gonna, us the week before? We'll be ready. Yeah. We'll have to. And let's put in just an extra day. Just we in case. We don't use it. Yeah, because if we end up with more right. warrant articles yeah, than we not. thought. So the Wednesday so, before is the 13th? 13th. Is that 12th? Yeah. 12th. 12th. 12th and 13th. Yeah, it's going to be the 12th, and if you want an extra day, then start on the 11th. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. No, we'll do the 12th, the 13th, 13th and then and the then following we, Tuesday. The 17th on Monday. We could do well, that's like a holiday. That. That's why I say in the 18th. Oh, okay. That's still Let's school put you back into school vacation. Oh. Yeah. Silly like goose. All right, so 11, 12, 13. All right, I'm sorry. I'm not good with calendars. I will be here as much as I can. I know. You're, I know. This is That's your week of people. help. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so the 11th, 12th, and 13th. So we'll do the 11th, 12th, and 13th. So the 11th and 12th, and then the 13th if we need it. The 11th is a select board meeting. Yeah. You can't have the term. And school committee. That's okay. We don't have school limit. Where's well, the date? If the school <laughs> committee is meeting and the select committee meeting, that means F is full and A is full. So, so we're back to the th 12th and the 13th. Yeah. Yep. Let's just try and do it in two nights. You, you'll, you'll be able to do it in two nights. All right, 12th and the 13th. We did it easy enough, time. Is if that, we have to stay late, we have, if to, we have to stay, stay late, late. We stay yeah. late. Well, and don't forget, of 25 of those, 15 are the same things you see every single year. Correct. Right. They're not going to take you any time at all. Right. Yeah. So. We might be able to get it done in one night. Who knows? You get a Your consent agenda. I, yeah, I was going to say we could do a consent <laughs> agenda for the uh, thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So the 12th and the 13th. So, Amber, you have to advertise our public hearings for those two dates, please. And um, yes. you'll get us the warrant, William, as soon as you can get us the warrant? Yeah. Okay. When, April 11th. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll try to have we have it for you by the way we haven't voted the budget what, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. um so we'll we'll try to get that out to you you know a week in advance minimum okay um but we can also if we have a reasonable draft that greg's not going to tell us is is riddled with errors we'll send it out early as a draft he is your nightmare isn't he? he's he's gonna tell you, <laughs> we'll that you to have him on the I, committee. I honestly i i kid but I, I like it because greg does catch a lot of stuff that, yeah he does we need it that uh he does I'm, I'm gonna overlook it we're pushing stuff thank you um all right that's i think this was a great meeting tonight yep. as always i want to thank you all for being here and um unless there's any other business we don't have any minutes or anything to approve so we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good meeting.